Oh, that was very subdued. I was getting ready to say that wasn't wasn't one of our best. But it's all right. It got opened. That's all that matters. What's uh? But, what, what's the drink of choice today? What are we going with? Actually, it's old. Uh, old. So I don't know if it's gonna be good. It's a Christmas ale from a local brewery that I just oh, like. Man. I was like, oh, I still have this. But Christmas. you know, I mean, surely beer holds better than like milk for sure. Oh yeah, you're definitely <laughs> good. No problem there. No problem but, at all. Back in the saddle. It's been a little bit. Uh, yeah. Busy teaching season for me with indoor. Yeah. So everybody, welcome back. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's been it's been a minute, about three weeks or so since we posted the last episode, but we have a reason for that, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, man, weren't the first WGI shows this weekend already? Uh, a lot of people are starting their local circuits. I know we had a local show. I know a lot of the groups out west have done local shows. Um, I think maybe coming up this weekend, a lot of the groups that maybe haven't gone out, as far as like the big name groups, will be making their debut first debut premiere mm-hmm. of the season coming up. Uh, video starting to hit YouTube, which is exciting. Like checking out what everybody's got going on. Yeah. Um, we'll, the activity is growing. So I already, I've seen like two videos and I already have a lot to talk about, but we'll do our early season impressions probably in another episode or two. Give us a few more weekends to kind of get a picture of what everyone's doing. But all I'll say is RCC might've had a down year last year. They are the real deal or seem like they are so far. It's wild. Solid start. It's a real Solid good start, start so far. <laughs> Um, Our guest has given me through Skype the X logo, <laughs> but we'll get into that. Uh, in a all right, so let's let's get into this. So, welcome everyone to the Aged Out Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Mike Fantini, and with me, as always, is Evan Worrell. And just a quick reminder, like normal, hit the subscribe button on YouTube, follow us, and subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever medium you prefer to listen to us on. Uh, it's all appreciated. Follow us on Instagram for updates along with the Facebook page. It's all just aged out podcast, super easy to find. And I mentioned at the very beginning of this that we had a little bit longer of a break between last episode and this one. And the reason for that is obviously we've been doing this for a couple of years now and we want to take it, take the next step in the development of this. And part of doing that is making the decision to launch a Patreon page and For those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically just a website that we have become a member on as a creator, and it's simply just an opportunity for any any of our viewers or listeners or supporters to give any kind of financial contribution they can afford to. Now, I want to make clear up front, there's no requirement to this. A lot of podcasts will time gate content and put little perks and stuff. All we want to do is just give you guys the opportunity, if you want to, to support us in any financial means with something as little as $2 a month. Um, and everything goes a long way. We appreciate it. And if you can't or don't want to, that's cool too. We're not going to hold it against anybody, but we just wanted it to be there. So now that I got that out of the way also, oh, patreon.com slash h out podcast. Um, today's guest, Evan just said a second ago, was throwing up the X symbol as I was uh, promoting RCC so far after their first weekend out. But uh, I'll let Evan kind of intro this guy because I think he marched with him longer than I did or more than I did. So, Yeah, I spent two winters with this guy. I think I'm really excited about this episode just for the sheer fact that it's a good opportunity for me to just set aside time to catch up with this this uh this dude because we live on opposite sides of the country now we don't get as much time to talk and catch up at maybe like a local show as we once did uh i can't think of the last time that i saw him actually uh so it's been a little bit but yeah i marched with uh jared quartz who's joining us today for a couple winters almost for a summer a part of a summer which we'll get into and then i think mike was one winner with us but then he also taught a lot of band was able to march and learn from some guys that Mike and I haven't, such as Paul Rennick and Rob Ferguson, which we'll get into, uh, and then do a lot, quite a bit of teaching himself, both at uh, Crossman, Blue Coats, X High School, and uh, the whole nine yards. So, without further ado, thanks for joining us, Jared. Welcome, man. My pleasure, man. This is awesome. I really appreciate the time. Like I said before, um, and you nailed it on the dot. Like getting to catch up with you guys is the more meaningful aspect of what I'm looking forward to. I think that's yeah. I think I that am. was the design. 
yeah, when Mike and I sat down and he was pitching it to me, I was like, yeah, we just like talk to people like we are sitting in the room, like sharing a beer or something. Like, yeah. hey, did you see this group? Or like, what's new with you? What's going on with life, man? Yeah. Uh, I think the last time, well, probably not the last time, but uh, I remember in Indiana, it was at, uh, I think it was the Indy Regional Weekend, maybe. I don't know. We were at Generations hanging out, if you guys oh, remember yeah. that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I vaguely remember that. Wait, was yeah. I there for this? You, you were there. Apparently, I had a <laughs> yeah, good time. <laughs> yeah, I think that's when we stayed at that Airbnb that we showed up to at like three in the morning. Uh, oh, you're right. And that lady came out totally. She was, we thought she was going to be so mad at us for showing yeah. up that late, but she yeah. was super cool. It was hilarious because she had given us a. It was one of those Airbnbs. This is complete sidetrack, but I'm down for it. Who cares? It was one of those Airbnbs where the lady like gave us the code. She had like a. Another little, like, I guess you could call it mother-in-law suite to her house oh, or whatever. Man. And it just had, like, an electric code to punch in. And we get there at, like, 2.30 in the morning, and I'm trying to punch in this code, and it's not working. I did it, like, three or four times. And so I was like, I'm going to have to call this lady. So I call her at, like, 2.30 in the morning. She's probably mid-50s, early 60s. But she was, like, wide awake. She's like, oh, I'm just sitting downstairs drinking a Coke. She's like, oh, try this code. And I, I did that one, and it worked. I was like, all right, sorry. So sorry. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that was hilarious. Uh, That's funny. I totally forgot Generations. about that weekend. I completely – oh, wait a minute. That was when we went to that, like, Irish pub, and they had that insane happy hour. Just you yeah, and we got there before the yeah. regional. <laughs> having to yeah. kill, having a lot of downtime and having to kill time while you're waiting, is it's not always a recipe. Especially for Especially in Indiana. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, man. So you want to just? Why don't you give us a little bit of a background on how you got into drumming and uh, your okay. journey through marching, and then we'll kind of go from there. Okay. Well, it all started at an early age. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> kind of, honestly, kind of. Um, so I kind of got into it, and I always say this. Uh, so my sister was a huge influence on me at an early age. Uh, she started playing saxophone and was in the band and all that kind of stuff. So when George I was, Michaels, yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, she, she since uh, went on to like be drum major and all that at a, at a private school. Uh, I still stayed in public school. Anyways, um, so she started playing saxophone, and I think when she was in sixth grade, that was like, uh, I was like in second or third grade or so. Uh, I started just, I was I was the adamant one. I wanted to learn, and every kid wants to be a drummer when they're young, just hitting things and trying to make noise. And, you know, me being the youngest of the family, I think I tried to be the loudest one as well, so that just made for mass chaos in the household so i started uh my mom got me into private lessons and the physical aspect of it was not great but i was able to like understand how to read it before we started in school so doing the private lessons helped out um you're talking then, about just like the coordination at an early age yeah the coordination of just like hitting things that wasn't really coming <laughs> But, like, being able to just see it and, like, okay, this kind of makes sense. It was just, like, patterns to me. But counting and all that. Anyways. Uh, so, yeah. And then fourth grade, just started up playing drums. And I felt like I was ahead of the game because I knew how to, like, kind of read music, even though it was just quarter notes. And we're just, like, hitting on two and four and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then it just went from there. Uh, stayed in it all the way through high school. Yeah, my high school was real. What did you watch in high school? So uh, I started in eighth grade, played bass drum. I played bass three, then bass four, then bass five. So my sophomore year, I played bass five, which was really our bass four. We only had four at the time, but we were using, I think it was 18, 20, 26, 28. It was one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, (laughs) so, but I was base five we, we really base four but i really wanted to play it because one of the cadences for our high school was on that drum so i was just like i want to hit this thing <laughs> and um then my junior year i played snare uh i was the section leader then and then my senior year as we went on we just got smaller and smaller and smaller 
Um, I think we started off with like five snares, five bass drums, three quads. And then my, by my senior year, it was one quad, one snare, three bass drums. Wow. Yeah. And I was the single quad kid. <laughs> hey, you can't mess up then. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I mean, yeah, at that point it was, you know, someone had to do it. And I was like, all right, I had my like Vic Firth, uh, quad pad with the double Spox, even though I'm playing with one Spox. <laughs> it's like, heck yeah, man. Go know. all in. You're yeah. right. And then, uh, yeah. And then, uh, high school. So, did that. um, my junior or sorry, my sophomore year, uh, one of my instructors, um, his name is Austin Osterhout. Awesome guy. Uh, he marched pioneer and he convinced me to go to a, uh, pioneer audition camp. I think this was for the 04 season. Went for the weekend. I think uh, Mickey Hartsog was the caption head at that time. I could be wrong. Uh, anyways, I could not tell you. Yeah, I, have anyway, no, yeah. I have no idea. I'm, I'm trying to go. That's back a long way time. back, man. It 04. Is. Dang. Yeah. I'm not really a uh, pioneer historian. so. Yeah. But yeah, that was an experience. Uh, I like flew out. And like some random guy that we talked to, like through res- uh, re- registering and like giving all our flight details, like the shuttle comes up with all these like auditionees. Yes. And this, that was like my first experience, like hanging out in Milwaukee, like taking like a flight there. So some random guy picks me up. That's a pretty bold step for a sophomore in high school. Yeah. And uh, it was just, I, I had no intention really marching. I just wanted, that was my like, everyone's like you got to go get the experience get experience blah 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 and that was my first like drum corps experience first great. audition never yeah. forget yeah i won't uh the coolest thing about that weekend was they they had their like banquet from the previous season on the saturday night of the of that weekend so it was like really weird but... <laughs> that is weird so <laughs> and i'm just were like, there any age yeah. outs that just like came back to the camp for that or was it all honestly just... i was so dear like not deer in the headlights yeah, yeah, but, yeah. uh it, it wasn't that it was more like uh horse blinders okay. like i was just so focused on just like trying to n- nail what they were asking me to do and it was you know that that's what i was really focused on i d- i don't remember really any meeting anybody i was like super quiet i was just like there to drum and learn and you said their instructors were austin oster what was it? Uh, Austin, Austin Osterhout. He was Osterhout. Hmm. Yeah, he was my high school instructor, but he uh, nice. he marched pioneer. Okay, that yeah. that name for some reason was like, man, that's a that's a tongue twister. Austin Osterhout. Yeah, it's like the arsonist has oddly shaped feet. It's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like anchor man or something. Yeah. Uh, so that was, I guess, your introduction to drum corps in that world. Oh, four man, that's that's crazy. That seems so early. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then uh, that was as soon as the drum corps aspect came in, like that summer, it was all right. First, first one was at uh, it's at the Baldwin High School show, which is I think it's now the later Pittsburgh show. Um, on the way back from Allentown, some some uh, still do it, um, but that was my first drum corps show. I remember seeing Cavaliers, uh, Blue Devils. Um, yeah it was just what summer was that oh four so it was oh, the four. train yeah the summer With train blues mix the and summer the train, 007 and that's when they had the the vic firth like short videos or you know like yeah those times yeah so, the, in the, the vault the the vault yeah so that that was me before youtube videos and that's probably been referenced before but you know that's all we had to watch band at the time. That's all we had. It's actually very ironic too. Cause like on the last podcast we did with Brian Stockard, who now uh-huh. works at uh, Vic Firth's and Remo, uh-huh. he was talking about that guy who did that stuff, the video content at the time uh-huh. His his job position was like the director of internet. Like that's what they called him. <laughs> Cause it was like before, before like social media, yeah, online right. marketing was like a uh-huh. thing. <laughs> director right. of internet. That's yeah. Awesome. Um, but I, yeah, we'd sit and watch. We'd wait for like forty-five minutes for those two-minute long videos to buffer, right? So we could watch like cadets. <laughs> it's it like nowadays. Was like the intro. Yeah, they yeah. Don't, yeah the they don't know the struggle. With some electric guitar. Yeah. <laughs> or that was the IP. That video. was IP. Those are the IP. That was IP. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so you uh, got the bug, I guess. You got to see yep. the, the drum corps live. You're like, this is awesome. Yep, I got the bug then. And then uh, a couple years later, this was for 2006, uh, I auditioned for an independent open line based out of Pittsburgh called Project Percussion, which I see you wrote down. Um, oh, yeah, and, I found it. <laughs> yeah, there was not a not a lot of ta uh, talent showed up, but it was like just the right amount. And um, this, is, this is indoor. Right? I was, yeah, indoor. Okay. So my high school, uh, we didn't have an indoor. I didn't really know what indoor was. Austin throwing his name out there again, and uh, another guy, Paul uh, Bodashevitz. Uh, he was another instructor of mine. They were both marching at Project that year, so I got to march with two of my high school instructors. Like wow, nice. yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that was my junior year. I played bass five at Project. Oh man, blinking. Murray Gussick wrote the beats that year. Oh dang, solid, yep. solid. Uh, yeah, um, Justin Heimbecker was out. He like became the director. I think he was a part of the Cadets, and I think he was just involved with the Blue Devils the last couple years. Maybe. That Anyways, name sounds really familiar. Yeah. Yeah, the name then, rings a bell, but. Yeah, March Project, Independent Open. We, we, the show was based around a violin, and violins were banned at that point. So then we had to. <laughs> it's ahead of its time. <laughs> the show that. was ahead you guys of its were trailblazers. Time. <laughs> yeah. The show was called String Theory. It was so deep. It was awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and then. That was my that was my first time going out to Dayton, Ohio, with indoor my junior year, and then I, I saw Rhythm X. That was the 2006 season. There's some iconic videos on YouTube of the quad line in the lot by the oh, tree. Oh yeah, with yeah. The microwave. I was I was there. It was awesome. <laughs> Who won that year? The 06 would have been Mystique. Oh yeah, they did the yeah. freak show. Yep. Show. Yep. Yeah. And then was it Luna was that Lunaria for Lunaria, X? yeah. Yeah. The Tim Jackson show. Right. The ballad. Basically, yeah. <laughs> Essentially. See and then yeah, the that's kind of what got me into like, all right, this indoor thing is actually pretty sweet because I only knew it as project. Like I didn't really see any videos. I didn't really I was like, all right, here's this cool little grid that's a lot easier to read than a football field. Like this seems pretty cool. And more personalized because we weren't in a uniform. We were like our faces were showing. Yeah, was not like, in a shako. Right. Yeah. I had the revelation of like, oh, this is awesome. See, it's you know? it's really funny when I hear people say that because Evan kind of makes the same comment from time to time. But for me, like I got off, so to speak, like from the shako and like the the animosity, uh, anonymity. There we go. That's the word. Yeah, yeah. Anonymity of it, and you like uh -huh. the level of on top of the world I experienced from those uniforms. Like there's still no feeling, feeling I'll ever have or, or have ever had to this point of walking through the tunnel in Lucas oil with your helmet or your Shaco down over your eyes and like just hearing, like sensing the crowd, if that makes oh, sense. Yeah. And you're it's just like, like going to war. Basically. I mean, it really yeah. does kind of, I mean, I've never gone to war. I don't want to downplay no, that at all, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I get the, the analogy works like that kind of like, I'm going to be the have the first swear word of the episode like the badassness that you feel from that and like the ch the tingles all over your body and the adrenaline shoots into you like I got off on that like WGI was still yeah. really cool but I just preferred the, the the uniform and the anonymity of it I don't know Right No got I can't. channel got to channel that adrenaline Mike you'll tick yeah. I know right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah All right yeah going back I got a long I'm, I'm going to try to drag this out as much as I can I met a lot of people, this gentleman, Matt, uh, and I met Jason Heaton, who is the center for blue coats. He was in the quad line there. There's a couple people, um, that had experience, uh, a couple bass drummers, March Glassman, and all of these guys from project were all in the, the IUP marching band. So it was like pretty much just IUP college doing indoor, which is kind of sweet for me like I was like oh that's pretty local and then my junior year not really knowing what I wanted to do I like applied to go to IUP to not be a part of the drum line but they had a good uh, communications media 
program that I was interested in because at the time I really wanted to be involved with like editing movies and yeah so nice yeah went to college uh at IUP joined the drumline fraternity which Chris Heston started and a Cheston. lot of yep Cheston Heston if you're hearing this if you dude you're the man you know that <laughs> Shout out. You also <laughs> tell me that I'm the man, so we're both men. Anyways. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it was like a small world. Now I'm like starting to get into like, oh, wow, these people like, th this seems easy. It's not, because at the time it, it felt like you had to just be like an, a superstar to March Drum Corps and do this, like all this kind of stuff. And I'm just trying to grind and meet people and drum as best as I can, you know? Yeah, it definitely helps to like, to know people or at least have a network going into the room like they, right they know to kind of like pay attention to you a little bit more like oh i know who that is like yeah like you go to your camp or you go to a couple audition camps the year before and like oh i remember this kid was here last year like right that sort of thing yeah exactly i have to digress a little bit be because before going to college i did audition at glassman i gotta throw that out there just because of all the project guys they were like yep you gotta go so my senior year I auditioned for Glassman, got cut, and I was – everyone says they are the last cut. Um, <laughs> but at the January camp, they uh, there was only six of us there for the baseline. And it was uh, me and this guy, uh, Mike uh, – I'm blanking on his – Michael Murphy maybe is, is his name. Was this for uh, the 07 he, season? This was for the 07 season, okay. yeah. Dude, I was there. Were you? Yeah. Oh, wow. I just like just kind of putting that together. I yeah, I auditioned for those seven summer. Yeah, and uh, like my buddy uh, Jerry ended up marching. It was like him and I going to audition. What he was ended... his nickname again? Japan. Japan. <laughs> Dang, yep. I could not. I was sitting there thinking yep. of this as I was staring at you. I was like, God, yeah. what was Jerry's nickname? Yeah. So Japan, he got a spot. He played. Uh, he was. He played top that year, and I was auditioning for the base three spot. Uh, Mike ended up getting it. Uh, love the dude um he marched matrix and had a little bit more experience on me and had a little bit more chops so you know some sometimes that's how it goes you know yep but then yeah i, I was i was i had to interrupt real quick i was auditioning yeah. for that summer of 07 and I, I actually went pretty far i had a pretty good end because my instructor was good friends with eric ward mm -hmm. who's a battery caption head mm -hmm. and stuff like that um at the time at glassman and I had made it into January, and they actually called me back to, like, maybe even February. But I don't know. I, I felt like I wasn't mentally ready. G West was a pretty big turnoff, which we can get into yeah. later. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah we, we need to spend See, the whole I, segment I was on the that. opposite. I, I loved G West. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> you I love was, dungeons I was one, yeah. with no heat and running water sometimes? Well, Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it didn't really phase me because it was just like we're roughing it anyways and yeah, that's true i'm just here to i was just there to drum and hang out you know i was lucky that they fed us <laughs> <laughs> no i'm joking i'm joking no. oh drum so corner that's going back yeah ended up going back for the summer of 08 yep. you get a spot yep you end up marching with a good friend of mike and i uh casey o'neill who's the section leader yep love uh, case Dude, love Casey yeah, so we much. We were in Evan was uh, in college with him for three years, and I was with him for two, I think. Yeah. Okay. I was, I was actually like, with him for four years, I think. Oh, that's right, because he was a five-year guy, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Dude, yep. he, he's one of my favorite people from my time at Moorhead. That is one of the most yeah. genuinely nice, like, dudes I've ever met. And he has oh, hands yeah. the size of a gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I felt like he like somehow got shorter sticks than everybody because it just looked like they didn't fit. I don't know. Yep. Really long fingers. Yeah. Humong his mitts. Yeah. His mitts for hands. <laughs> yeah. Paws, yeah. if you will. K Casey was a big inspiration to me um, because he is not – it wasn't just his work ethic, but like how he gathered us to just have one goal. It, it wasn't like – he felt like he was like uh, – it almost felt like he was like the quarterback. Like he was just there with us. Like he would never held himself above us at all. Like it was just like, all right, guys, like this is what we got to focus on for the day. Like we're, we just got to do this, blah, blah, blah. Like this is what they told me to expect. Let's have fun and let's just go for it. And then he was at 100 all the time. Oh, just, yeah. You, you know – 
you obviously you guys know his personality but like it was just one of those like oh yeah i'm competitive so it was like if i see him doing that i'm just gonna do that too you know he's definitely the epitome of i'm gonna lead by example like right. not just oh, tell people yeah. to do but i'm just, I'm just gonna do it without yeah. a doubt and he's famous at least among moorhead cats for the casey shako head bob at the end of the show i've oh, yeah. like crazy dude his shako plume i don't know how it never <laughs> yeah. fell off in shows it was insane like you could yeah. see it from like an airplane going over right. the stadium him bobbing up and down it was it was nuts yeah and i'm glad that that is like that's infamous because that is like him in a nutshell it really like is. he never never overdid it but it was just like just the right amount of like the fine line of kind of overdoing it but mm-hmm. like <laughs> doing it with like his heart and he's just like going it's genuine yeah. yeah i've got my nothing. wife actually has a my wife has the show from that year, the oh wait, the Carnival show. That was a fun show. Yeah. Yep. yep. Had like those purple to bluish fade drums. Yep. So yep. I also have to add this in because you, you yeah, also yeah. marched Glassman in 09, correct? Yep. Uh huh. So Evan was at the audition camps with you in 07. I mm-hmm. was at the audition camps for 09. Oh, and wow. it's funny how you say that like everyone says they were the last cut. Well, Casey was the yep. snare tech for the 09 summer, and I had gone to yep. Moorhead. Cause he knew I was coming there and done some lessons with him just some, right. t- just with him personally, uh, leading up to the camps. And I made it to January and it was me. They took nine that year and it was me. And if you know who Jackson Landry is, he ended up, he ended up marching uh, crown for like two summers, like 2010, 2011. After that, I, I think I know. I think I remember. All right. Well, him and I were legitimately number 10 and 11 that year. Cause K- I mean, I went to school with Casey that next fall and he was like, yeah, dude, mm-hmm. you were just too young. He's like the other, right. all three of your all's hands were on the same level with, I forget the, the guy they took as number nine, but um, mm-hmm. he was like, all your all's hands were the same, but this guy was a freshman in college. They took and Jackson and I were seniors in high school. So they went with age yeah. and uh, right. Yeah. So that's funny that uh, you almost marched with Evan earlier, and then you almost marched with me earlier too. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. The uh, the how 09 life baseline. may have changed. Yeah, yes. never know. Right. Yes. Yeah. The O nine baseline was pretty much the same as the O eight baseline. Alan Donofrio that went to Blue Coats, and then uh, this guy Corey Ward who March uh, Matrix kind of filled in, and then. Uh, Dave Jackson. So four four of us were the same. It was crazy. Dave Jackson. I do re- I yeah. do remember you guys seeming like you were very comfortable in the audition process, as in like <laughs> definitely knew you should be there, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. You guys were very laid back and very like you knew what was going on basically. Right. Yeah. So then after the summer of 09, I guess next in the timeline would be auditions for the 2010 WGI season. Yeah. Which would have we, been We got to talk about Matrix though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Matrix, which is which yeah. is key for the Rob Ferguson stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um because everyone always forgets that I, I did that and it's not that I like don't forget about it. It's just I don't know. It's never brought up so it's like all right. <laughs> I did put it down. Yeah, yeah. Um so at that point it was Chris Heston was the caption head. He wasn't really around too much. Like he would come in for regionals and like if there was a music change, like he would be involved with that. Um, it was mostly Dave Clark, Rob, and just the techs that were there that summer. Just we were grinding and uh, earned a lot of respect for Rob over the summer because he was just like all about making us better. And obviously that's the goal for everyone there you know but it's like he him not being a drum corps guy which he references a lot like he talks about never marching but you know like for us doing it like we're here now and we gotta make the best out of it um so i earned a lot of respect for him he then asked if i wanted to kind of come out and march matrix uh my base tech at the 2008 season of glassman his name was cyrus uh, he marched Matrix a couple years, went to Europe with them, marched BD. He, he was the base four in the 2004 season, which is like we talked about the 2004 season being like my first thing. So it was like, all right, this guy marching from a, a California group being from Ohio, 
like it was like okay it's not just you have to be in that specific area you know like I, I, to me it felt like glassman was close so that was like one of the only things i could do and blue cones wasn't on my mind at the time because the iup connection to glassman was like really what i wanted at the time but yeah march matrix yeah it makes sense yeah those drums that we had in 2008 were the same drums that Matrix used in the 2009 season. Oh, that's right. Yep. And uh, that was the start of the Glassman Matrix kind of connection. Connection, yeah. And because uh, you guys rehearsed at G West for Matrix, didn't you? Um, we rehearsed in Michigan, but we stayed at G West because G West is like five miles away from the Michigan border, or maybe it's a little bit more than that. But it was just, you go down the G West road. I, I couldn't tell you the name of it. You make a right and then you're in Michigan. And then there was a local high school that we used their like full size gym. And then when we were done, we drove through the snow and stayed at G West where there was no, like nothing was turned on other than just like maybe the shower. Yeah. The, <laughs> A couple of lights, we had the access to the kitchen and the showers may have been on if Bill was there. Bill was like the handyman of G West. If he was there the weekend of Matrix, like we had showers. If not, it was, we roughed it. <laughs> <laughs> and just for anyone yeah. who maybe has not ever experienced G West, some, <laughs> some of the more younger listeners, uh, Glassman, Rip, yeah. um, who no longer exists, they had their basically own facility that yeah. everyone it was called g west they would just like it had a kitchen had showers it was instead a of like meeting school <laughs> yeah instead of meeting at a local high school to have auditions they would have auditions at this facility g west and just like windows were broken out and the heat wouldn't work <laughs> like yeah. i remember one weekend that i was there for camp the showers wouldn't work like you were talking about right like, i guess we're not showering this weekend yeah so yeah, make yeah. memories. Definitely was not the most glamorous uh, move-in <laughs> spot, in my opinion, yeah. for a month. <laughs> of no, it, 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 it was and it wasn't. I liked that it, it was like our own space. Like it was like we just went in and we had our room and then we went out. Um, that bathroom in the basement has ingrained to always bring your shower shoes. <laughs> so I will never forget those ever. Oh, I remember because, that shower. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was the 09 Glassman sh- or Matrix show? What was that show? Left Out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, was it Nate was the center? Yep. There? Little yeah. Nate Hawk. Yep. Yeah. Uh, who, who ended up, he, uh, he, uh, he didn't really march the full season because he was doing school. Um, he like kind of came in towards the back half of the season. And yeah, yeah, Nate March Glassman. Shout out to Nate. Love you, dude. That kid, man, he's super energetic. Love it. Chops. Yeah. Felt like he was just on Red Bull constantly. <laughs> just just woke up and that was it. Maybe he was. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Yeah, woke up know. bouncing off walls. Right. Uh, so then Matrix Glassman. Hmm? We, re- we, Jared and I unite. Yep. For our audition at Rhythm X, which I was super nervous for. had didn't really have any yeah. clue what I was getting into, especially that season. Um, dude, those videos just crack me up. I'm going back yeah. and watch them now. The yeah. Jared Thomas videos on oh, YouTube. Oh, yeah. The, the <laughs> where it's like, like the, the first time <laughs> we've ever played the opener. If, the metronome if you hear the on. metronome, it's so fast. It's like, did we really play at that speed? We tried. <laughs> we tried. You might have like, got dude, close. Maybe got 236 close a little bit. or 238 or something yeah. like that. He's like, it's so fast. <laughs> Are you so scared? Fast. I'm like, yeah. yeah, I am scared. I have a really awesome story about that audition. So coming in, uh, it was la- – honestly, it was last minute. Uh, so my buddy Japan, Dave Jackson, who marched glassing with me, they were like, let's go. We got to do it. And the Friday night of that weekend, I was like, all right, you, you guys got me. So Japan and I, who was also my college roommate at the time, uh, we drove out to Toledo where Dave was from that Saturday. I'm like emailing 
the Tims, like, hey, I need a for like interested in a packet, like where we'll be there Sunday. None of us had the music. We already registered. <laughs> it was like, all right, cool. So we all get the packet that night, Saturday night at like 10 p.m. And we're hanging out at Dave's basement, just like padding and learning all the spots. Japan knew he wanted to go um, for anybody. Jerry Oliver is his real name, uh, but we'll call him Japan. Uh, he knew he was going out for the top base spot. Dave knew he was going for the bottom base spot. And I was just kind of learning all the spots. I was just, all right, wherever they throw me, I'm just going to do my best. And uh, we pulled an all-nighter. I was designated driver to drive down. So we left, maybe it was like 4.30 in the morning, got down to Dayton around like 6 or so. And I think registration was around like 8. I don't, I don't remember the times. But it's yeah, all a blur. So it was all a blur. But um, yeah, so then we show up and meeting Ryan Lamb and Jordan Smith and Akira, who was my base tech uh, for the 2009 season of Glassman, was there also and uh, ended up doing really well. Um, ended up getting uh, the second base spot. So Japan was top. I played two. Alan Donofrio, who was also a Glassman guy, March 3, came off of the Blue Coats summer and then March uh, Rhythm X the year before. This guy, Nick Krebs, on base four, and then Dave Jackson. So four out of the five of us were Glassman people from 2008. So it was like, all right, cool. I've already spent we're a back. <laughs> yeah, right. The band's so, back together. Right. So it was, it was like, cool. Nick was like the only one out. He ended up going the bd the next summer so it was like you know we were all like it felt that was like the most stacked baseline i was a part of at that time it was pretty at sweet that time. i like how you <laughs> yeah. say at that time because we can't we'll talk about 2011 when we get there but yeah, um, yeah. right we'll get to it we'll get to it right um dude yeah that's that winter was like very interesting for me because i had done three years of independent open right. but at that time i'd never done anything that just required that level of accuracy and just that difficult i'd never done anything in that caliber i was like this is insane uh also i don't think anyone's ever tried to do anything with that many notes since then which right. is probably a good At thing that tempo um, definitely not. but so yeah that's mine and jared's first marching winter together uh rhythm x 2010 and then you were planning to take off the summer or something of 2000 the summer of 2010 yeah so um, so how it kind of worked out, uh, the 2009 season for Glassman, I really enjoyed, but there was, a, I, I don't want to say a bad taste, but it was four out of the five of us were age outs in that baseline. Um, so I was going to be the only returning vet. It was going to be, you know, a lot on my shoulders at the time I was marching rhythm X and it was like, all right, I, I want to kind of see where else I can go just because the 2009 season like I loved every moment of it but it felt like it was like I'm I'm trying to push myself and push myself you know so ended up not really wanting to go back to Glassman not just for personal reasons I didn't hate the organization or anything just wanted to do something else at the time uh, I was going to audition for Phantom because uh, Akira Robles, who was my tech for Glassman in 2009, ended up going to Phantom where he marched. Um, Ryan Lamb was trying to get me to march Blue Coats. Dean Hickman was like, dude, you got to come to BD. It was like, all right, all these things are happening at the same time. Like, I don't really don't know really what I want to do if I'm going to spend all this money, just go to all three or, or what. So, um, I ended up deciding, all right, Akira's calling me to Phantom. Like, I learned a lot from him for, in the 2009 season when he was there. And uh, ended up, it was one of those ex experiences where Paul was very, you have to be at every camp or you're not in. And I was going to have to miss two camps for the 
for RhythmX, it was going to be the Indy Regional and the Mid-South Regional. And those were both the same weekends that uh, Phantom had camps. And it was like, it was one of those like, it was, we couldn't really work it out kind of things. So ended up not really going to an audition. I went to audition at Bluecoats in 2010, got called back. Um, Frank Connolly was there, my, my friend Justin Brenneman, uh, Dave Dwin, all those guys. Like it was the Belgian a, beast. Yeah. So that's where I got to like meet him and all this kind of stuff. But my heart really wasn't in it for blue coats. No, no offense to that or anything. It was just one of those like I would at the at the time Akira got me into the like the the Paul pedagogy of like technique and just playing, you know. So ended up getting cut at blue coats. And then, yeah, I, were, I wasn't really marching or anything, just kind of hanging out. And then around like April, May, after RhythmX, the season was over, I got a bunch of phone calls like, hey, uh, your name's out there. We, if there's anything that ever happens, like we'll, we'll get you in somewhere at least. So, yeah, first one, I don't know if you guys knew this, Santa Clara Vanguard had a hole that needed to be filled. I sent a video um, and they asked me to come out. Um, at the time, it was like a week in advance, couldn't afford the plane ticket. Katie Hanka ended up getting that spot and I'm so glad she did. And then Crown called me. Uh, that, <laughs> that was with, uh, oh man, Mike. Our ba Mike yeah. Dow. Mike Dow, our base yeah. Four, our base four went down in spring training. Uh, yep. I was like, y'all need – and I think Mike knew you or heard of you or something. I was like, y'all need to call Jared. <laughs> it, it, it was because of the IUP connection. He was from Philly area, uh, was involved with United. I, I knew a bunch of people around that time. Like it was like – it was like a Pennsylvania thing. So he like kind of knew who I was through people. We never really like talked too much, but yeah, he ended up – said in me i think i still have you guys played bar talk that year right or something like that uh we were supposed to there's a okay. bunch of music we were supposed to play that summer that okay didn't, but yeah okay i i have some of that <laughs> that's funny yeah i still have it and uh yeah so I, yeah <laughs> just in file i didn't print it out but so <laughs> and all this happened within like two weeks like vanguard uh crown reached crown. out yep and then Akira was like, like, it was one of those where I was like, yep, all right, I'm not marching this summer. Like, I, I accepted it. I was going to, like, try to get a summer job and all that kind of stuff. And then Akira called me, and he was like, hey, we got a spot. Can you be here Sunday? And what was the like, deal with that anyway? Yeah. Um, it was – so I can't remember the guy's name. And I also don't – if I do, I'm not going to throw him under the bus. But um, yeah. he just wasn't uh, – he wasn't – wasn't doing, working out. It wasn't working out. He was a vet who had a huge ego that wasn't really – who plat he kind of plateaued in a sense and just was really hard, had a big attitude towards like the section leader, and it was just like – he didn't really he wasn't vibing as well and it was like actually starting to take a toll on a lot of things so just goes to show for all the kids out there it's not always about yeah. like it's not always yeah. about the hands and stuff just like be a team player get better yeah. yeah so and that that honestly that's like yeah like it it sucks for him i was like super super ecstatic it was like all right akira all right, we'll make this happen. Ended up sending me like all the um, audition stuff. Not audition, but like here's all the packet you got to learn. Um, we'll get into the variations once you get here. Uh, no, no music, like no show music whatsoever. It was just like the exercise packet, which is how, how short notice was that? So, what day of the week did he call you and say um, be here this Sunday? So. That was maybe like Monday that okay, week. So, so you had like a yeah. week to get your ducks yes. in a row and get there. But, so, but it was like, all right, 
at before like i couldn't afford the ticket out there and it was like at the now it's like all right like my mom and my family kind of got involved where it was like all right obviously there, there's a bunch of people trying to get me to march like they're here to like they they just got my ticket and just paid for the summer which i am totally in in debt of you know it was one of those where the family just made it happen and i was able to like march my age out you know yeah that's awesome yeah. and win a fred sanford high yeah. Yeah. trophy we can't leave that <laughs> so, part, of, uh, yeah. part out so so um so we got the flight i think we ended up getting it like we we finally were like all right good to go this was the thursday night of that week um my plane my plane was leaving sunday morning so i flew out sunday got there and this was their last week of spring training like it was like wednesday was the show in full uniform for like the family and then thursday was like we're hitting the road so it was it was pretty quick so I want to emphasize yeah. that point. So yeah. you got there on that Sunday, right? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was Sunday, like mid afternoon ish or so. Okay, they were so, they were. And you hadn't person. seen any show music. They gave you the exercise packet, and that was it, right? Yep. So correct me if I'm wrong here, and this is why I respect Jared so much. You got there Sunday and did your first show in uniform with them. What three or four days later? It was Wednesday. Yeah. So let that sink in for a minute. He got there, having never seen any show beats, learned it, plus the drill, and somehow had the endurance. That's what blows my mind the most, not the learning the music, because you had a ton of experience at that point. We're very comfortable on your instrument, probably a yeah. very solid marcher at that point from a technique yeah. standpoint. But right. you were able to go from not marching to making it through an entire run through of a drum corps show. That's the most impressive part to me. Like, were you like dying at the end of a run through with the, I'm assuming, or, um, I mean, I was, I was for sure like ready to sleep that night. Um, <laughs> cause it was just uh, the, the pressure on me. I was, it, it was, it was pretty crazy. Like it was like, all right, all these people were just waiting for me. Like, I remember I was like, all right, we're going to learn the, like the, the first half of the fourth movement and we're going to try to do it in this four hours or whatever and maybe we can move on and it was like all right rep and then i like messed up and they were like all right got to do it again so it was like all this pressure of just like i felt like i was just holding everyone back at the at the time but they were also like they didn't have that view on on me they were just like super patient and just getting reps themselves yeah, while yeah. I'm learning the show. But to me, it was just like, I can't, I can't mess this up. I can't mess up. Like, I think the fact was... that it was spring training <laughs> probably contributed to that because they were all right. still bad at the show too. So they needed the right. reps. It wasn't like you're filling a hole like middle of July and they've got it down pat, like from a learning standpoint and they right. just need to clean up the little details. So they were still probably doing a little bit of learning and comfort building. So that I'm sure right. that probably helped with the whole them not feeling like, they're pulling you along right so i uh so how i learned that show it was pretty much uh i still don't have music for that so <laughs> if anyone's out there kevin hanrahan give me some music man so you learned it all by rote <laughs> it was well uh kevin gave me his binder oh okay. and uh it was like i had it for like the night because it was pretty much i woke up ate breakfast binder in front like plate on the side just like trying to all right this is kind of where this is have the like drill markings in there already because he's already done that so it was like cool like i'm just reading off of someone's like music that they've already like put the notes in for so it was like that was super helpful and then but learning it it was like I remember Akira, the like the first visual block, it was the bass drums with the horn line. They were just getting reps and it was us like just like on the field with them getting me in the show. And it was like, all right, <laughs> here's here's the eight counts with the binder. You got it? Yep. All right. There's your dot over there. You got it? Cool. Here we go. Rep. <laughs> and it was like, oh God. That's and insane. it was just <laughs> I would I would I would have to think like there's very few people 
that could learn an entire drum corps show in three or four days. Well, now looking back, I think it was a lot easier for like I I had it easier in a sense because all the the four guys around me had it down. So like if they if they played it and I didn't play a rep, it was like oh there's my space and yeah, there's that yeah. space. So it was like easy That's to true. just kind of fill it in. I guess it might be a little, not simpler, but different than learning an entire snare book and drill right. in three days. Right. Cause just from a density of notes standpoint. Right. That's so fair. it was ironically. No, go ahead, Jared. Oh no, go, go on. I was just going to say, ironically, the bass drums, the last section that gets solidified that summer arguably or maybe not even arguably just legitimately were probably the best section of the battery at the end of the summer <laughs> yeah dude that, maybe that, that drum line was nasty <laughs> and you know what's funny and i've told it i've told evan this many times i was on tour with my first summer with the blue stars that year and i was like straight up survival mode you know, getting you know popping my drum core cherry so to speak like right going through the fire yep. for the first time like our drill was really hard I had no clue Phantom was good until after the summer was over. I was so oblivious to every other core around me. Like I got back to Moorhead and Evan's playing Phantom videos on his laptop in, our, in his dorm while we're hanging out. And I'm like, who is that? And <laughs> I go look at it and go, I had no clue they were good. Like you guys warmed up because you got the core finished like what? Six that year. Yes. Yeah, so we were like, we were seventh or eighth. So we were warming up around the same time as you. And I still like never paid attention to you guys ever. It was just hilarious that I was oblivious the entire summer. Right. <laughs> Dude, Paul was like throwing shade from the parking lot. It was hilarious. He's like, yeah. you guys got to sing good vibes. We're going on early. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, dang, he's about to leave. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so I, I guess that. Take- no, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. This will segue a little bit here. No, I was going to just transition to, I said earlier that we've not had a Paul Rennick uh, member on our podcast yet. And I really just want to know like what it's like to march for Paul. Like, is it super laid back? Is he? Su- it seems from the outside that it, he has a system that works. He knows it works. The exercises are super simple, hit the fundamentals, and just go from there like is that, is right. that a false read or does no, he have I, it down like a science basically and every summer is just a formula yeah. kind of the the best way i can put it in a non-band way is like all right we are the performers we have to nail we have to hit our mark when we're asked mm-hmm. it was like when we when we did big reps like if it was uh like a run through of the opener percussion standstill it was like it, it was very there was a lot of time for us to like kind of get into it we could um you know talk about whatever within the sections and it, it felt like it was very like all right everyone ready and action kind of thing like it felt like it was just very methodical everyone was like he got everyone into that spot of like all right everyone's gonna have a really good rep right now at least that's how it felt, you know. So, so he's very good at the mental side of the activity. The the mental side, without making it like, we got to nail this triplet roll here at this point. It was more of like he was always the big picture guy. So, so he's good at keeping the pressure off. I guess he's good at distracting you from like the gravity of the situation. Like you guys could win a drum trophy if you don't screw up too much. Like it's right. more of like, hey, we're just gonna be great. We're gonna do our thing. We're going to do the next rep just like the last rep, and we're not going to think too hard about it. Right. Um, at least from a base, baseline aspect uh-huh. and, like, individually, that's how it felt. I don't know. I can't speak for the other sections. They they had their own issues, and <laughs> we had our own issues, you know. But it was it, was, it just felt like, all right. I would imagine the 2010 line didn't have that many issues between the sections or among the sections would be my guess. No, on, honestly, it, it felt because it never really hit us how how good we were. I, I don't I don't really know. Maybe until like the last three weeks of the season, maybe so like, like. So it snuck well, up on you pretty much, and you started beating yeah. people, and just kind of went, "Wow, we actually might have a shot at this." Yeah, because we were going on super early. Like I remember, um, I I, the, I I think it was 
the Minnesota regional. We we got there and it was like, all right, this is the first time we're seeing BD. Like our numbers were going back and forth, back and forth. And that summer, the 2010 summer, it got canceled. And I remember it, that. Yeah. And Phantom, it's like a tornado or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No bad weather. Phantom. We were out on the field. Like I remember setting up. So we had two. We had two different openers. If there was no tunnel, we did like a certain. Like this is where we started on the field, and then kind of got to where we started. And then if there was a, a time to run on from the like the front left corner, like how the show started, then we did that. But Minnesota didn't have that tunnel, so we're like out there. I remember going to my dot and just waiting and it was like all right are we are we getting a penalty what is going on what what's happening this is weird and then the announcement said that we were like it was it was canceled and i just remember nick taylor just like hitting the loudest shots to just get us into like a sort of a block to get off the field and it was like <laughs> that that was it I, I, we were actually because <laughs> yeah. we would have gone on like a group or two at, I think we were next actually as the blue stars right after you guys we were in the tunnel yeah. we could see you guys standing on the field and then that yeah. happened and we all all were forced to hang out under the stadium for like an hour yeah and it, then, it was maybe more than that yeah, yeah it was we a were while just, it was we while. were there yep yeah drum yeah. corps wild there's all kinds of random random things like that and the funny thing is like w when you know there's rain and storms forecasted for the evening when there's a show you get there on the bus and you're almost like, all right, I either want it to not rain so we don't get delayed, so we can just do our process, do our, our methods, whatever we do pre-show, and then do this and move on. Or you wanted it to just cancel the show. Because the worst thing ever was getting there, sitting on the bus. It's raining, but it's not supposed to rain that long. And so you're right. like, well, is this happening? Is it not happening? It's getting delayed. Like, it really messes with your mental state from a performance standpoint. And right. then you get super cooled down, like you're in sleep mode at that point. And it's just, yep. it was never fun. See, I, now that you talk about that, I had a different aspect on those rain shows, at least just individually, because uh -huh. for the exact opposite reason, like it was like, all right, all these people are kind of getting out of the zone, like the, the ones who are going to be like, a, the turn out like have the best is going to be the ones who are able to just turn it on instantly you know you you hear sure. that expression so much but it was like to me it, i learned that at glassman because um the 2008 season the orlando regional was all like everyone was just super sleepy and i got really annoyed with some of like my fellow performers because it was just like dudes we gotta get like f the show's happening what like to me it like baffled me that that happened you know yeah no um, I, I totally understand that i'm just i'm i've always been a very uh what's the word it's Not okay routine i'm a very routine yeah. person I, so i got you I, and I totally agree with you've got to be able to flip the switch i think is the yeah. phrase most groups use but i've just been very very my whole life very very pattern oriented and routine oriented and mm -hmm. that's where i thrive like if right. i learn to do something a certain way I'm going to do it the best when the lead up to it, the whole process is maintained the same way. Right. So whenever those curveballs were thrown, like I'm not, I mean, obviously I was still able to do it. Right. But like my body didn't like it because my body learns yeah. very quickly when it likes to sleep, how it likes to sleep, when it likes to perform, you know, it's just, it's all right, routine. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's cool, good stuff. Like I've always been fascinated because Evan and I have asked each other who we would march for, if we could go back in March one more summer. And I say Rennick every single time. Yeah. Not because yeah. he wins a lot, just that's that's a style I haven't been exposed to. You know, I got the the Tom Monks East Coast style in two thousand ten. I did mm -hmm. the Rhythm X indoor, which is kinda like a conglomerate of all kinds of styles morphed into right. one. And then I did Mike Jackson, uh Eric Shriver, Blue Coats in twelve. Like right. Rennick is the one outlier that I haven't right. experienced how they drum, you know, how it works, their system. So I, I've said that every day. I, I'm very jealous that you got to kind of yeah. out of the blue. Obviously you were good enough and earned it still, but out of the right, blue, right. kind of get that opportunity to have that learning experience. Oh yeah. And it was, it was humbling. The, I, I got to give a shout out to, um, 
Ellis Hampton because uh, he was there grinding with us all summer too. Um, in ten. Yeah, and uh, like all the texts were just on the same page. It it was like it just felt it felt like everything was just happening how it was supposed to happen all the time, and I was like just there trying to drum my best, and that's all I had to worry about. Yeah, that's always you know, a good. That's setup. convenient, right? Yeah. And so because you guys, you guys the, are in the zone. Yeah. Go ahead. Rook, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because the drum line was doing so well that summer, it was like the the core kind of like made sure that we had what we had like we always had a field to ourselves it was like we never had to wait on anything it was like a really weird experience <laughs> it's like all right the drum line is you know contending they're the, right they're the i don't want to say most important thing but it felt like it was like all right we are getting treated like like uh like gods in a sense. No, it I was respect that gods, because but yeah. the core knows they're not winning a medal that year. You know, by that by it's a certain point of like, the season, they know. So it's like this drum line, this percussion section could win a Sanford. Let's do everything to help them do that at right. this point. It's kind of like when the when the pitcher is throwing like a shutout or a no-hitter or the perfect game. Like he's just kind of right. like sitting down at the end of the dugout and everybody else just kind of like stays out of his way. Like we're just going to stay out of the way. We're not going to mess this up. Right. Uh, yep. it, it was, it, yeah, and – uh, but we were still like it, it didn't affect us like that was happening but it, we never got the ego of like we're better than the rest of the core like we're just here doing our jobs and i'll like you always hear stories of like well they just track all the time we just track and do run throughs and it that was that's kind of how it is <laughs> but uh i just always i remember the so the front ensemble had like a big pit cart that they just put all their stuff on and would go to the, the percussion ensemble field and we would put our water jugs on there they would take our water jugs over to the field and then from the truck we would just track over there just doing like a heart to exercise or something it was like what do you guys want to play hey let's play this exercise cool on a loop and then we just would go just get our hands warm or something that's awesome. So yeah. you guys are in the zone. The staff's got you in the zone. Just things yeah. are gelling. Things are clicking. You guys produce some of the best on-field tapes that are out there. The Allentown yeah. tape that Marty yeah. had. The 2010 finals tape with AK on the field. Yeah. Screaming that he wants to, if you guys are putting out CDs, he wants to buy one. Right, right. Um, I actually like the Allentown tape better just because Marty gets out there for a couple things that are mm-hmm. – uh, a little bit more, I don't know, meatier in the book. Yeah, yeah. Um, you guys throw down for three straight nights, end up winning the Fred Sanford Trophy, which is has to be just a feeling of elation. Yep. But it was crazy. Would you trade it for a gold medal if you could to win? Um, probably not, because. <laughs> If going back, like if that was if, – if Phantom was number two and we lost the Fred Sanford but won, it, it wouldn't have the, the same impact that like I think it had on all of us um, just because like we were way down there. I think cadets were fifth that year or something like that. I don't know. I just remember like, oh – Growing up from Pennsylvania, cadets were always up there, and it was like, oh, cadets are fifth and Phantom sixth, and all this kind of stuff is happening. And I, I, I remember finals night, like, all right, winning the Fred Sanford Award, Phantom Regiment, and it was the loudest thing. It was probably louder than who won that year, honestly. So, which was which was BD. <laughs> which was BD. That's probably why. Right. And it, it that was the loudest reaction I still like can remember being out on that field after like even just uh well no never mind I guess Blue Coats 2014 was pretty pretty sweet but um yeah like hearing that eruption of the crowd and then them announcing and in sixth place Phantom Regiment it was like you you'll never get that experience again it was it was kind of cool. Yep. It, yeah, that's pretty unique, I would say. I'm not sure on the statistics of that, but the group that finished overall maybe the lowest to have won a, a 
like a caption award. Yeah. Do we and, know uh, yeah. what the lowest finishing drum core with a with a Sanford winning drum percussion section was ever? I have no idea. No, I'm not positive, but I'm gonna look that, that up. That 2010 Phantoms probably in the running for that. Yeah, I would say I would, I would say so. That's the most recent for sure. Yeah, I yeah. would think so. I would think that's the case. Dude, I I I kind of agree. I kind of think that every individual section member, whether you're a guard member, a brass member, a percussion member, would almost prefer like their sub captions first place. If they had to choose one or the other, like best guard, best brass, best percussion, or a gold medal for the core, I think most people would be selfish in that decision. I know I would pick a Sanford over a gold medal. I don't know if I would have. Yeah. But it was weird for me though. Like the year that we were close, we should have won second both. And second. <laughs> you should have so won both. So we were both. second overall and second in drums. And I think I would have taken the gold and stayed second in drums. Mm. Yeah, but <laughs> it, it was a little bit different situation. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. 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 But so it, yep. it's it's a it's an interesting just kind of hypothetical. <laughs> yeah, definitely for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I know there's some things we didn't quite get to today, but we've been to about an hour and eight minutes. That's how long we've been going. Uh, I know oh, wow. Evan's got a cat. I know that, dude, time flies when we, we record these things, when we're having yeah. fun, just kind of kind of BSing with each other. But yeah. which this just means we didn't get to everything, so we got to have you on again. And you're not okay. teaching with anybody winter or summer I'm, right now, are you? I'm not. Okay. So then you can come on and we can talk trash this summer. Okay. <laughs> we'll, have you, we'll have you back <laughs> okay, on. Maybe not. Uh, we can we can talk critically. I, I like to think we don't necessarily right. just like yeah, completely yeah. Okay. crap on people, yeah, but yeah. we're not we're, we don't sugarcoat it. I guess fine. You <laughs> right. caught me, Evan. I use talk trash for effect. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, we we don't like to demean what anybody does, but we definitely call a spade a spade is the way I like to put it. Good right, or bad right. or everything in the middle. So I know we'd love to have you back on as long as you're yeah. willing. Uh, we can hit the other topics the next time that we didn't well, yeah, quite get I'd, to. I'd love to talk about my time at Crossman. And yeah, well, I was going to say, we'll have coats. to do like a part two. Yeah, we did, we did a part two. Teaching uh, at Blue Coats. Yeah, we did Dude, a part two yeah, with Dan Shack. Yeah, we could go for like another so. 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, easily, easily. Uh, that's what happens when friends that haven't talked for a long time I know. reunite. So. Uh, it's kind of funny too because i didn't even know some of that stuff about like us being at glass with those seven yeah i didn't either stuff like yeah. that yeah. yeah that's uh so i think let's go ahead and close this one out for today a reminder um subscribe on youtube uh, apple podcast spotify follow on instagram and facebook for the updates about all new episodes Again, another reminder, the longer break between the Brian Stockard episode and this one had to do with the launch of the Patreon page, uh, patreon.com slash agedoutpodcast. Not required again. There's no perks. It's just there if you want to support us. If not, we hope you keep listening. We'd love to have you as part of the audience. And uh, we will see everybody next time. Peace.